welcome to the Starter Girls Podcast. I'm Amy Lafitte, and I'm here with the fabulous Jennifer Loading. Awesome. And whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we're here to talk about it. And I'm super excited to be sitting here in our podcast studio today with um, some really good energy ladies. Um, Jennifer, tell me a little bit, like, what's been going on with you? What have you been doing this week? Tell me all the goodies. Well, staying busy for sure, doing a lot of networking. So went out yesterday, and I love networking. That's one of my favorite things to do. I just really like getting out and meeting new people. And so yesterday while I was out and about, we went to a cool little place over in the Richardson area, kind of where, pretty close to where we're doing our next event. Oh, cool. And so um, met some incredible people there last night, one of which is a rock climber. Ooh. So super excited about that. We're going to be featuring him here on the podcast here soon. So trying to work work that up right now. But I think the big thing that I've been focusing on right now is just really doing a lot of networking, meeting incredible people. I've got some amazing people that we're lining up for this show. I'm not going to spill any news on this podcast right now because I'm just hanging on to this incredible information. Amy knows, but I'm just going to say we are going to have some amazing people coming up on this show. So that that's what I'm working on right now is a lot of that. And I am still doing my Operation Belly Be Gone. I'm still doing my low carb, sticking to that. And i um, been doing pretty good with that. And I, and I know you're doing your carnivore diet, so I'm excited to hear about Dude, that. Yes. It's been actually, uh, so I, I went to a, a really cool like um, vision board workshop over the weekend um, with just some friends. And it, you know how sometimes like they always say like you go to events and decisions are made. So I go to this event, and normally I'm used to going to like business events, right? So I'm making decisions about my business. No, I went to this event, and I made the decision, like, I've just for sure, like, got to give up all the sugar, like 110%. And I've done really good. Like, I've gotten to the point where, like, all I was eating was, like, keto ice cream or keto gummies. Like, the, the sugar content right. was super low. But still, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't all the way carny, and that was kind of like my in-between for a week or two. So I was like, no, I have to go all the way all the way so I did all or nothing I did so and it's actually been weird enough like because I took some candida cleanse pills which helps a lot with sugar cravings so I wasn't having like the the actual body sugar cravings but I was still having like the mental sugar cravings Mm, so right that's been kind of interesting just kind of working through that but I was so proud of myself I actually (laughs) I watched The Bachelor last night (laughs) yes it's one of my favorite like guilty pleasures and normally like that's like my night where I kind of like eat bad, you know, yeah. like, oh, I got to have the keto yeah. ice cream and all the goodies, right? And I didn't have anything. And I was like, this is kind of weird. But I was like, I'm so proud of myself. Like, I don't eat, I didn't even feel like I was missing out because I'd done it for several days. Like, right. I think day one is super hard. So, so anyway, that was really good. That has been fantastic. And then also we're getting ready to go to Orlando because um, my company is having an event out there and so I'm really excited about the conference my husband Luke is coming with me which is going to be really fun he's just going to hang out at the resort and like write and work out and be yeah. Luke you know how he is right um but then after that we're going to go to Disney World oh my goodness and, yes so fun. it was funny because I called one of my friends that goes to Disney all the time and I was like so we're going to go to Disney on Super Bowl Sunday so I'm thinking that like it's going to be less people there and he was like no <laughs> he's like the people that are going to Disney don't care about Super no. Bowl Sunday right he's like it'll probably just be just as busy and half the time it's like people from other countries or whatever you know so I was like well darn so <laughs> well, I'm a little jealous that's like my favorite place really I your love favorite Disney World yes it's like one of my favorite places we went I took the kids there I don't know five maybe five six years ago and uh-huh. I did a girls trip we went, I went with another friend of mine and we loaded the kids up in the van and went there and I don't even know if they liked it near as much as I did really I'm like you Isn't know I'll, crazy? I'll just go by myself to Disney World and everybody can just stay home and yeah mm-hmm. let's go to Disney World yeah right? let's go it sounds fun it's true we're gonna have a good time well and you know he's a big Star Wars fan yeah. and we haven't been to the new Star Wars edition so I like literally said okay we're gonna go to I think it's called Disney Hollywood we're going to that park and I was like all day it's all about Star Wars until yeah. you're done with Star Wars and then if we go see some other attractions in the park great but like if you want to like literally hang out in Star Wars and be like a Star Wars buddy for like a whole day you're gonna you be cool with it. it yeah well I will tell you if I go to Disney World we're shutting that park down like my kids know if I pay for tickets to go to Disney World they went with me before we're shutting that park down can I tell like, you the craziest thing you know I'm not a morning person yeah my friend that has been a couple times he's like here's the secret he's like 
you have to be at the park at 5 a.m. Yes. At the park. At the park. Well, for the yeah. Star Wars thing. Okay. And and then you wait in line, and then they get you checked in, and then he's like, and then you do this, this, and this to, like, hit all the right rides. And I was like, because he's like, I don't know what your sleep schedule is. And I was like, well, it's one day, and it's for Luke, so I'll do whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so I was going to, like, freaking 4 a.m. or something retarded, you, you know? You guys are having fun. I'm jealous. Y'all yeah. Fun. I'm it's excited. Fun time, so. I already got my Baby Yoda shirt. Oh, yay. <laughs> Baby Yoda shirt. You're going to have to take pictures and show us, so it'd be fun. Exactly. I will. Awesome. I'll have awesome. To post. Very cool. Well, since it is in the month of February, and this is the month of love, right? Ooh. We thought what would be fun for our Star Girls Weekly Top 3 would be to talk about our top three ways to give, what did we say, Amy? To give love back to our communities, yeah, right? Yeah, like love impact. Yeah, that's a good word. I like love that. Impact. Love impact. I like that. I like that. So why don't you kick this off on this one, and then I'll follow up with mine. Absolutely. So I think one of the easiest ways I love to give love to people is I love complimenting people. I feel like it's what's funny that I've found over time is all of us think compliments, but most of the time we, you know, we get shy, like you've talked about before, or we feel like they might think we're weird or something um, to actually give the compliment. And so I learned, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, I was like, if I think it, I'm just going to say it. Absolutely. Because it's so crazy. And I'm sure you experienced this, like how you do it. And then someone's like, oh my gosh, you just totally made my day. And you're right. like, I thought you just right. like already knew this, like, especially with people you already know. And then like the random strangers, it really, really helps. So, um, and then the second one I would say is I like to have conversations with people in the community. So, you know, and they've, there was actually a study I read over the weekend and they talked about, it's called, um, social, like, uh, inter integration, I guess, but they actually rated it as the number one. I saw this Ted talk about it. The number one thing like above health and nutrition and working out and like all the things you would think of as the highest factor for people that live to 100 years old. Awesome. So, and they said it could be as simple as like, if you go to Starbucks every day, you know, talking to your barista, like I go to Kroger like four times a day. So I have like this Kroger lady that she's always there at self-checkout and like we're friends and like I hug so her funny. and like yeah. we have conversations and she knows my husband. And so, um, so I think those are important and especially it is now. So sure. that's a really big thing. Right. And then my last is just giving good energy. I give good I energy, positive it. energy everywhere yes. I go, whether it's on social, whether it's in person, like, you know, people can read your vibes, even right. if they don't have a conversation with you. So giving good vibes wherever you go, I think that's really, really important. <laughs> I think all, all of those, because I do all those too, and I am yeah. an energy feeder. We've talked about this all the time, that I read people's energy, and their energy is low, I'm low. If their energy is high, we're on. We are yes. on. But I love all of those. And, and the other thing, when you were talking about your Starbucks girl, you know, right now I'm... I'm I'm like, can never get off this book. But <laughs> one of the things she forever. talks about is making three new friends a day. Ooh. Making three new friends a day. Because when you do that, I think it's one, it becomes a game. But not only that, think about what the impact is when you make three new friends a day. Yeah. You know, you're ma you're reaching out to somebody to extend and be like, hey, you're going to be my friend. It makes me think of Sarah's podcast that we talked about that. You're going to be my friend. I know, right? Right. <laughs> and I haven't forgotten that. Yeah. Like, I'm going to make a friend today. So yes. my theory that I would pick with my first one, we kind of talked about this would be starting at home with your family. What are things you can do in your household to, and my big thing is trying to empower people within my own home. I like to empower and I have sometimes a bunch of little grumpy people in there and it's so ch challenging at times to get around that. But I run around, you know, like a little Tasmanian devil, I call it to me. I'm like, you know, you're going to set your day for the day. So it's either going to be good or bad based on those thoughts. So, mm -hmm. you know, what you can do at home, but also, the fact that I love to go networking, I love really connecting people. I like trying to find a fit and they can fit with somebody else and I'm going to bridge that gap and make that a friendship or whatever that's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be a business relationship or a friendship. I always say that a lot of my network marketing buddies are my friends too. I've never For done sure. business with them, but they, be, they become good friends. Of and then the other thing, my big one is just empowering. I get excited seeing people win. That is my biggest thing. I really like to see people win. And I know sometimes that's You know it. Mm -hmm. And everybody around right? Yeah. And you will never be criticized by somebody that is doing more than you. Yeah. You will always be criticized by somebody that is doing less than you. So mm -hmm. think about this. When people are winning, it's a great day. So it I is. love to see people win, and I like to encourage them to win. So those would be my three. This is a good topic, actually, because we were kind of stumped on what to talk about. We kind of created this last minute, so this was actually yes. fun. And, you know, I think you're like the queen of inspiration. So, And I love what you were saying, because even if you're empowering or inspiring somebody, and now they're creating 
that happy exciting energy they are passing it along to others so you're it's like you're almost like a conduit to even more good happy energy (laughs) and Warren, i'll tell you what is it i don't know if i said this last time but gretchen rubin says you know in order to make people happy you have to act happy if you want to make yourself happy make people happy mm. so it's like this like little yeah. I don't know, maybe like i'm just like a parable or something i don't know what you call it it's like this you really read that you know i had to like look at that again and i'm like wow that's so true i you love know? it you perpetuate what you want mm-hmm. so kind of cool all right well i am super excited we have a fabulous guest today a friend of mine i'm super excited miss yulia brown hello everybody hello yulia so let me tell you a little bit about her real quick and then we will get her on here and chat with her so Yulia was actually born in Germany, and then she spent most of her childhood in Siberia. So kind of neat. You're going to notice her accent very quickly. Love chatting with her and having German descent, you know, descent. We get along very well. We're very strong personalities, and I would say opinionated and, you know, all that good stuff. So she moved to the U.S. in 1999 after doing a college program in her country and came to Ohio and went to Ohio State kind of interesting and she's been here ever since which is kind of fun she is a loan officer she's married has one daughter that she says is going to be 13 here pretty soon yes she is. exciting and the one thing that Yulia says is that she loves what she did what she does is because she loves seeing people become homeowners for the first time so I want to welcome the fabulous Yulia Brown to Ooh. our show <laughs> hello we everyone. are super excited to have you here we are we're so excited and Thank I want to I want to have our listeners get a chance just to know a little bit about you so these are like our little rapid fire questions on the front end so are you a morning or a night person i am when i'm awake person so <laughs> <laughs> this is the best answer i have ever heard that is, I, that is definitely a unicorn answer we have had no one say that yet i love it so please please you know can continue <laughs> well i also like jennifer and i probably one of the reasons why we click so well I work with energy myself, mm-hmm. so to me, concept of time, like, it's not as we used to, oh, it's 11 o'clock, I have to, and then 12, and then this, and one of the best things I ever read was, there is no such thing as time, there is divine timing, mm-hmm. and I Love walk it. in divine timing, so to me, it's when you feel right, and that uh, we need to quiet our mind and just listen to what we need to be doing, and I understand that... I do have nine to five job, but a lot of times you do have to stay there until seven. You have to come there at eight to meet your client, and mm-hmm. it's all divine time, and there's never a set schedule. That's oh. really good. That was very good and very deep. I like it. Yes. I'm She's already so enjoying fun. this. I got a million of this. <laughs> I know she does. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're going to have a little fun here today before she so has good. to leave us. <laughs> so, are you a cat or a dog person? I love both, but right now I have a dog who we adopted um, a little while ago, probably three years from now, and oh my god, the best thing ever happened to us. That's That's awesome. awesome. Um, What's your favorite food? Pokey. Loki Pokey is my favorite joint here in Dallas area, but Pokey is my favorite. I crave it. I love Pokey. It's so good. That's awesome. I like it too. I have one other question just because I think... (laughs) I want to know this, and this is not even on any of the notes, but I think other people would want to know, too, because, like, Siberia, I haven't been there. <laughs> I only know from the movies, like, you and I think about, there. I'm like, I think <laughs> about people walking around, like, in fur coats and drinking vodka, or they, like, have these, like, dogs, and they're, like, out in the snow, and I, I don't know. So, please tell me a little bit more about Siberia, since you grew up there, Absolutely. and, like, you know. Yeah. Well, true in everything that you just said and more because if you go real north and Siberia is huge I mean they say Texas is big Siberia is bigger and you go up north yes you have people that ride in dogs because there are no other means to get anywhere um, I love if you ever watch that uh, show it's called voice from around the world it's European show it's uh, I'm paraphrasing their name but mm-hmm. Siberia that they showed was people have those fish leaned against the walls and all that. That's not the Siberia I grew up. Okay. I grew up spoiled by culture, by theaters, by museums. I remember seeing Swans Lake so many times Mm -hmm. you cannot even imagine. Our drama theater was the best. I'm from the Omsk city. That's where I was raised. Um, So theater is my huge huge obsession and I love watching people dance 
Um, it's a huge metropolitan where I was born, uh, no, where I was raised, I would say, because mm -hmm. I was born in Germany on the Russian uh, military base. Um, so there are a lot of different aspects to Siberia. Um, no, there are no bears where I'm from. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> if you go to a place that's like deep forest or the woods or taiga, what we call it, then mm -hmm. yeah, you will. We actually, when we were on the far east, uh, living by the China border, which was not Siberian border, but uh, you can have negative 40 degrees Celsius and no snow. Wow. And of course, that was the area where we had bears and you name it. It was quite exciting time. It was challenging, it was very detrimental, but it was exciting. So if you, like you said earlier, if you fo focus on the positive, mm -hmm. you'll get positive. If you focus on negative, then, you know, it's all on you. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you for answering that question, because I sure. think a lot of people are just intrigued by it all and you know unless they you know saw some sort of travel show about it they don't really they only know what they saw in a movie or something so absolutely so good so yeah. tell us like a little bit about you your background you know you know your career your home life all the all the pieces that are you um i am married to a wonderful man jason brown um not my first marriage but i'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with this person because he's absolutely amazing, as I have said before. I'm going to say amazing again. Aww. <laughs> so great. He is a nice guy. Yes. I, I have. to that. Aww. Yes. I have a beautiful daughter. She's about to turn 13. Love of my life. Um, she's actually my miracle child. I was told I cannot have children. So when I found out I was pregnant, my kind of the whole universe kind of quit existing. I had my own universe inside of me. Mm. which now still is and uh, well not inside of me clearly <laughs> 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 um, I have a great career I was a realtor before but um, decided to jump the fence and become a loan officer I feel like I have a lot more tools at my disposal to have that you know I'm a loan officer what's your superpower kind of thing <laughs> because I love the fact that I don't care if I have to work with you one day or I have to work with you one year as long as the goal is for us to commit to our goal and move forward we can make it happen for you you know and it's just it's a lot of patience even a year it flies by so quickly a lot of people are like oh my god we started working on this deal like eight months ago it's already time I'm closing in the house or I have people oh I just went from idea like I kind of thinking about buying a house and here I am homeowner three weeks later I'm like well there you have it. Life happens. There's no such thing as time. I love it. I love it. That's so good. <laughs> so I have a question for you. What did you end up studying when you were at Ohio State? Um, well, I had a Russian-American college there in Omsk, Russia. We had exchange program with Ohio State University. We went to visit um, D. Russell Lee Career Center, which was also, I believe it's north of Ohio State University. So we were staying with families, and uh, my degree that I completed was paralegal international management. Interesting, wow. So the poor people around me, there's no way arguing with me a lot of times. It's like <laughs> same subjects we can no, go for. never. <laughs> and I've learned that from yeah. working with lawyers, and yeah. when you argue a subject, you just go big or go home, you know. Right. You just, mm -hmm. I live with a lawyer, so I, I know how that also, goes. Oh, so there you have it. And <laughs> yes. I'm a Capricorn on top of that, so ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. That's so fun. That's so fun. So I would, this is maybe a kind of a fun question because you come from another country. I always love to ask these questions. We have like people from different places. So what would you say is the biggest maybe difference in people? I mean, because we always say, you know, people are everywhere you go have this, com like, a lot of commonalities, right? Right. But maybe culturally, what, what would you say is, like, I guess maybe when you came here, would have been, like, the biggest cultural difference? You mean news networks do not tell us that? <laughs> 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 Those evil Russians. No. <laughs> She's um, so funny. I love her. <laughs> I'm not the most politically correct person. I'm it's just okay. It's all right. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> viewer discretion advised. But, um. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> The biggest change, I think, is the language. Language. Everything else, we all happy the same, we all cry the same, we all hurt the same, mm -hmm. we love the same. Um, if we focus, and this is one of the things that I'm not happy about the world, 
there's so many subdivisions. Oh, you this, or you that, or you have this orientation, you have that. Right. We're finding so many different aspects to be different about versus of actually like, hey, what do we have in common? I agree. What do we love? Right. Do we enjoy the beach the same? I mean, I don't care as far as for me, if you want to wear a burqa or do you want to wear absolutely nothing? We're all God's creatures. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And it's only yeah. your discretion. And my personal opinion, if I don't like something, I just look the other way. Right. I yeah. have absolutely no reason to sit there and try to justify what this person is doing, why are they doing this, because I am so perfect. Well, I mean, yes, I am, but that's a different <laughs> subject. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in reality, I think if we focus more on what we love the most, and the reason I moved to the United States and made that commitment 20 years ago is because I just love the fact that in one building, in one room, and I'm never tired to say that, we can have so many cultural backgrounds. Mm -hmm. right? that it's just mesmerizing to get to know people instead of being like, well, I'm from Russia and you from Russia and we all from the same <laughs> house. Okay, it's boring. Right, right, you know, yeah. Wake up speaking Russian or I don't care what other language, Mandarin, uh, Japanese, German, I don't care what language it is. Sure. The fact if you cannot embrace other culture and try to fix them because they are somehow broken no, they live like this for thousands of years. Mm -hmm, sure. Why go fix anything? They're happy. They have their own problems. Hey, let them figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know? It's like they yeah. say, if you're going to gossip about me, pray for me because I want to be just as perfect as you. The same thing. Yeah. Let right, people right. do their thing. Yeah. yeah I agree. That's good. I think that's great, Yulia. I know. Thank I'd love you. to hear, because um, you do have such an interesting like childhood and background and everything. Do you have... Our mics are doing weird yeah, stuff today, <laughs> like really weird yeah, stuff. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm like going in and out. So yeah. if I go like this, you'll know why. <laughs> um, so have you had a childhood experience that really impacts who you are or what you do today or how you think? Oh, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> One of the most significant ones was, you know, bullying is a huge deal these days, and I believe bullying's existed since a long time ago sure. and that happened to me I remember that in the fifth grade and um, the entire class decided they want to go elsewhere and I had decided that I respect my teachers and it's absolutely pointless wasting 30 40 minutes under the windows of my school while I can be in class get it over with and go home and go about my business well come to find out it was me and one other person in the classroom mm -hmm. well my whole class got against me, my books were flying, this, and a lot of words were said. I cried for a minute, but then I realized that I don't have to belong anywhere. I was perfectly fine by myself because the more secure and stronger I felt about who I was, instead of being just another herd, I had started drawing very interesting, very self-sufficient people to me. Because if you're there trying to fit in like a little puzzle, well, create your own puzzle, create your own story. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have to belong, especially if these people cannot appreciate you for who you are. And that was a very significant time that happened to me and very controversial, but bullying is the best thing that happened to me. It created the person who I am. Um, one other thing, I grew up with handicapped grandmother. Mm -hmm made me very um, independent, I would say, in a lot of ways. So when I moved to the United States in 19, it was just no-brainer to me. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, it was just another setting. I mean, right, right. it was not a big deal, and she gave me a lot of inspiration. And, I mean, just many different experiences and a lot of wonderful people that I met along the way that built this brick house called Yulia. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's one of the things I will say about you. You are a very strong woman. And I think, you know, that a lot of times when we go through struggles and adversity, people look at, you know, like they look at strong people as a shell. 
And, you know, I always say you don't know somebody's story until you know somebody's story. You, you have to get and peel the layers off of people to really understand why they are the way they are, why they come across the way they do, the, the stories that they've, you know, the experiences and things that they've gone through. So I want to talk, if you're open to it a little bit, because sure. you are a cancer survivor. And so I think you've had a lot of really, I mean, coming from another country to here and some of the things you've told me about you, I mean, definitely, I think it, it makes you very unique. But I also think those life experiences make because they make you stronger, it makes you appreciate and value things in a different way. So I really would like to, to talk a little bit, I guess, maybe about, you know, because I, when I say to you, what's the hardest thing you've ever had to overcome? I, you've overcome a lot of things. I mean, you've dealt with a lot of different things that would, for the average person, may be very difficult, you know, and it's all relative, right? Okay. So, um, yeah. So tell us, I guess, a little bit about that, because I think, you know, our listeners listening to this, we talk a lot about tenacity and mindset and grit and just being able to overcome obstacles, things that pull you back. And how do you come back out of that to survive? So tell us, I guess, a little bit about that and what that looked like for you. It's like what doesn't kill us make us stronger. And I used to think that overcoming cancer was the hardest thing for me, especially at that time I was married to uh, not such a quality individual and it was a bettered relationship so um, I think those experiences actually helped me to help other people to overcome a lot of things and when I was going through those things um, my wonderful friend who still lives in New Orleans Louisiana right now and uh, Priscilla she was she still is like my earth guardian angel and the thing is now that my mother is going through this it's no longer it was difficult the most difficult thing for me to go through cancer it's now mm -hmm. watching your loved one going through it i was here by myself and it's kind of made it easier not watching my family suffer because you'll call them oh, i'm fine this is great oh it's not a big deal you know and you just blow it off and they feel better even though they were having their own tournament there but when I started watching my mother, it's like, oh my God, because you make decisions for a person that doesn't speak English, doesn't really understand what's going on. You try not to expose as much to her, to not to freak her out. So that's mm -hmm. another thing. And it's a very fine balance. So I'm finding this to be my next hardest thing to go through right mm -hmm. now. And God's willing, we'll go through this. Yeah. You're super strong. Well, and you Thank talked you. about um, your cancer, and then earlier you were talking about the doctors had said you would never be able to get pregnant, and so I'm assuming there's a correlation there, like maybe not. I yeah, they basically, through. when I went through chemotherapy and a lot of things that happened, um, they had to scrape some things off of my uterus also. I had Hodgkin's, um, I had stage 3B, and they also, it was spread in a lot of different places, and when they did certain procedures they said you will be lucky to carry the child it was like oh mm -hmm. thanks <laughs> wow but i became a mother at 27 and yeah. uh, what a miracle baby very miracle that's wow. why i shut down all of the world out yeah. i'm like no <laughs> yeah wow well it, that was meant to be I know. Okay. Wow, incredible story. What was the timeline too with, like, so you got diagnosed with cancer and then you had your procedures and then how long was it before you had your child? Um, basically, 20s, early 20s when I got diagnosed, like 20, I was 20 years old. Um, 21, I was free and clear. Wow. Um, so young. I know, that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. Thank you. Oh. Um, I had a lot of different thoughts, and uh, including like, oh my God, I need to end this and this. But then it was one of the probably scariest moments is when you have a violent partner in your life mm -hmm. and you're sitting there with a handful of pills and you're like, I'm gonna end this and this ha whole door is rattling. And that was my choice. I just looked in the mirror dumped the whole pills, I was like, well, you want to fight, we're going to fight. <laughs> I, I opened the door, oh I was goodness. like, it's wow. on. Wow. And I, after that, I never looked back, and I was like, you know what, until my last breath, I'm going to fight for what's right, against abuse, against the, any sort of, you know, I don't care if it's verbal, if it's physical, or anything else. Sure. Like, empowerment, making at least one person smile per day, 
That's my goal. Mm -hmm. She gave me chills over I here. I know. Listening to her. I knew there was a wow. story in this. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard stuff. I've heard a lot of her stuff, but not all of it. So this is really good. I'm glad that you're sharing this with us because, Thank like you. I said, we talk about all this stuff, and it's really, I think people listening to this, I think the big message here is that, you know, I just put something out today because I was doing a, a free book promo for my book, and I was talking about, you know, with tenacity and grit and unwavering belief, you can always make a choice to better yourself in some way. Mm -hmm. and get through something. So mm -hmm. I think that this is just an incredible story and just an incredible thank testament you. to you. Yeah, oh, this you. is awesome. Real quick, what is your, we're like we're running out of time here and I know Yulia's sure. got to be somewhere, but I want to get these in really quick. What would you say is your strongest quality, Yulia? Well, I've got a bunch I'm going to give, I've got a bunch I could give you, but I don't want to <laughs> label you. I want you to fix that. Figure My that strongest out. one is probably, somebody asked me, it's like, well, to be better, do you compete with someone? And it was told by somebody very strong, um, who is also in a very competitive, you know, time. And then I just said no. And I see this puzzled look on his face, and he's like, what? Well, this person is doing this, this person is doing that, that person. I'm like, I don't know the story of these people. Exactly. Yeah. I am not going to compete against anyone. If I woke up and I did better than I did yesterday, this is my little win. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, I am not trying to be like somebody else. It's like that story in what it was at sixtieth ish. Two guys were running the mile, and one just looked over the shoulder and he missed it by milliseconds or something. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, like, why look over your shoulder? That's what happens or when you look behind you. Yep. You just, you, you are your own person in this life. You're right. not competing with anyone. It's like, we're all crazy that's not in competition, you know? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> well, and if I were going to say, you know, my word for you would be grit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be my word for you. Let's say you have grit. Such an overcomer. Yeah. A fighter, actually. If I knew, she, like, yeah. I would say you're a fighter. She is a fighter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Definitely a yeah. fighter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So It's a German blood. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I don't want to mess with anybody from Siberia. I feel like they're all really strong. Well, I, I know they live with the I snow and everything. Like I will tell you the day that I met her. The day I met her, when she came, it's so funny. We met actually at a networking event, and I was like. Yeah, because I grew up with Germans. Like, I know that yeah. culture, and I'm like, oh, she's one of those places over there somewhere. I just immediately, her energy, just, I was like, mm-hmm, yep. Yep, strong. Birds of a feather strong. flock together. That girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, that girl. <laughs> so that girl. So who is your biggest influence? My grandmother. I love her. You were going to say that. It's mm. amazing. That's so amazing. awesome. She was the one that, uh, she was completely crippled, and is, there is no ADA in Russia. And she he was living in the uh, like a little compartment of the building. It wasn't even her own apartment at that time because of Soviet Union, you know, all that stuff, community living. And she had to go get water as a single mother with my mom dragging a little sleigh with a little bucket of water while she was on crutches trying to get water from a frozen, what do you call that thing where you get mm -hmm. the water from, you know? Like, yeah, a well or something? It's like a mm -hmm. well, but there is a giant thing sticking out, and you have to pump it mm -hmm. to get, yeah, a wow. water pump. Mm -hmm. And it's all frozen around, as you can imagine. Yeah. And she was wow. overcome. I'm like, she can do that. <laughs> wow. We lived on the fourth floor, no elevator. If she can do that, I mean, there's nothing I cannot right. do. There's wow. Incredible. So, yes. Incredible. Definitely her. God bless her. Aww. It's amazing. Well, here's the thing. We're going to have to have Yulia back again. We're going to expand <laughs> on this because I know she has to be somewhere today and i got to get her out Thank the door you. so she can go take care of her business. But we're going to have to have her back so we can talk some more because she's a lot of fun. So, Thank Yulia, you. here's what I'm going to ask you really quick. If our listeners wanted to get in touch with you on any level, what is the, what is the best way for them to reach you? There are a couple of ways. Um, there is always my cell phone, 214-802-7399. It's very public. Um, also, I'm a personality on this is a real estate come Dallas that we started a little while ago. Awesome. We can talk about that next time. Yes. Um, that we have YouTube channel and all the information is there as well. And um, Facebook. 
Okay. Julia Brown, Y-U-L-I-A Brown. We got you. And what we can do is when we put this out, we can put some contact information sure. in there. That way they can investigate and check you out a little bit yeah. more. And I definitely, we, we'll get you back in here again and we'll expand a little bit more of it. I think we could talk for a while. Yeah, I think we could oh talk yeah, this will be like the two hour <laughs> yeah. podcast next time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we do these, we never know what you know how they're going to flow when they go and who we're talking to, and so it's just kind of fun. But I think we could have a little more fun here and kind of talk some more about Thank some you. good stuff. <laughs> so, what we want to say to our listeners is, if you enjoy our podcast, be sure you give us some ratings on iTunes, and of course, we'll follow our Facebook feed. We cannot do this without you. We love the feedback, right? We do. And I think we need to wrap up with our Starter Girls mantra. So, it's a great day to be brave. You are not getting any younger. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up. Be amazing. Be you. Do you. All right, you guys, take care. Be kind to one another, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Woo!